Ladies and gentlemen, the hammer of the gods, Foo Fighter! crazy things over the last 20 years. But I think this might be the craziest thing the Foo Fighters have ever done. I think it might be. Edge TV is taking you backstage behind the curtains to witness firsthand the inner workings of an iconic rock and roll performance at one of the world's greatest theaters built more than 2,000 years ago. A theater that set in motion the arts as we know it today. You'll be following executive producers Dan Catullo, Carl Rosenberg, and Casey Bennett from the inside of another Landmarks Live concert event. Ready on camera one, take one. Professionals at Landmarks Live will create a TV program in the most grandiose way possible for the entire world to enjoy. So get ready, you're going to Athens, Greece. We're putting you front and center of Foo Fighters performing in the Odeon of Herodas Theater, in the shadow of the famed Acropolis, Temple to the Gods. Dave Grohl, along with Nate Mendel, Taylor Hawkins, Pat Smear, Chris Shiflett, and Rami Jaffe, what do you offer the band that has everything and has played everywhere worth mentioning? In Steps, Landmarks Live. I just remember uh, getting the call asking if we'd be into playing at the Acropolis, and I said, uh, of course. After two years of planning and mediation between Greek officials and Foo Fighter management, things were getting close. But with the release of Concrete and Gold, the window of opportunity was narrowed to just one date that both the Foos and the Herodas Theater could sync up. To top it off, starting at 1 a.m., the production crew would only have 18 hours to pull off the show of the century. They would bring in a rock and roll lighting system, custom stage, sound system, and have it all QC'd by 4 p.m. Just in time for Dave Grohl and the boys to walk on stage for sound check open the doors at 7 p.m. to the peeps, then set Foo Fighters loose on the Greek people and the world in the most magnificent venue known only to the gods. Something like this doesn't happen overnight. Actually, it was two years in the making. And then three months out, while Dan and the City Drive team was in Memphis, producing an episode of Landmarks Live with the Kings of Leon, things suddenly got real in a big hurry. It's uh, 8 o'clock at night now. I'm going to work on my TD a little bit. Band goes on at 10.30. Uh, we still load out right away, and then the core team members of Landmark, we all jump on a jet and we're flying to Greece. We have a scout first thing Monday morning in uh, Greece for Foo Fighters at the Acropolis this uh, July. So it's a crazy night, so we're not going to get any sleep tonight. We're going to go right to Greece. Went to bed, got up very early and had to charter a private jet to go from Memphis to Athens, Greece, to land in Athens at about 1.32 o'clock in the morning to have a meeting start at 9 o'clock. So that was the start of it. So it was, it was a great deal of coordination and effort just to get, get the thing going. We would never have been able to make these meetings here if we didn't have a jet. Tomorrow will be an 18 hour day. Six weeks ago is when I, we just sounded like we were gonna, this was a go. But we still needed to come and get the permits because nothing's ever been done here. There's never been a rock concert here. Big undertaking. Welcome. Welcome. This part of the process started about six, seven months ago. It started with a, uh, a phone call to looking for on the ground connections here of people who produce here and also who have access to the bureaucracy of permits because, quite frankly, everybody said we couldn't do it. It couldn't be done because it hasn't been done. First thing that we did was to go look at locations and meet with the local Greek 
production company. Is it, did they do it like this still, like the way Yanni was? Is that how they're doing like this? Yes. Yeah. So, well, yeah. I mean, we just can't bring the stage out too far. because If you can do it like this. And we have all the technical people here to figure out how to do it. It's not that simple. We got Dan Catullo, the director, the mastermind behind all this. And he's trying to figure out how we can, what we can do and what we can't do. We are walking through the venue. Um, Trying to figure out how to turn this into a rock show. They're talking about having the stage yeah. up too far for the PA. They already know that. They we were just walking through right now trying to figure out where the stage goes and how we're going to build it out. But then we could fill people in on the yeah. sides. Yeah. We, yeah. Need, we need people down here. Now we're trying to figure out camera positions and lighting and how the sound system. The rock show, when you, um, you can't, the, the artists really can't walk in front of the PA because it'll cause feedback. Yeah. Okay, so you see a very characteristic uh, photo of the venue. Yeah, so right now we're trying to walk through and figure out where eight cameras are going and how we're going to build out lighting and staging. It's interesting. You know, this is the epitome of Landmarks Live in concert. It doesn't get any more landmarky than this. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and my job is basically to help Dan get it on TV in terms of um, camera placement, what kind of cameras we use. I think it's going to be two, two cameras at, at, at a stage oh, height down there, mid shot, about head to toe and stroke represent. I also help out a lot with the, some of the technical side of things and the infrastructure logistics side of things. You know, I mean, Taylor's rise will be right in front of the center the portal. Four and then yeah. and six remotes. Oh, God, yeah. And uh, that's why Dan employs me, I think. Either that or he thinks I'm funny. <laughs> Make sure people can see the band and get the hell out of the way of the beautiful venue. It's about the environment in the band. I haven't thought about any other thing that I can add to it. Have you guys ever shot at any place like this before? No. We have a list of like 60 landmarks around the world that you know, and obviously includes some of the obvious ones. But the band actually came up with the idea to do here. They wanted something big, and they challenged us. If you can make the Acropolis happen, we have a deal. And we're like, okay, <laughs> we'll make it happen. This is a musical postcard with one of the biggest rock bands in the world for Greece and the Greek people. So everybody around the rest of the world can kind of see what a great place this is and that they should all come here because if you haven't experienced it, you should. Greece! Landmark's live concert series is hosted by Chad Smith. Chad's recognized industry-wide as one of the premier rock and roll drummers. All right, let's get a mic. Chad's body of work with A-list rock and roll bands is the envy of all would-be musician and professional artists. Right now, we're going to go check out the flea market. You want to come with me? Come on. Chad's personality and his camaraderie with other musicians have complemented his interests in world locations and cultures. As you walk backward, very good. This combination just works. Hello. Hello. Yeah. In case you need to hit a little, little Greek bathhouse. Bathhouse of the winds. Okay. Come and knock on the door. These guys are like, ah! Am I in the right place? All right. Hey, Chad, landmarks live in concert. You know one pocket in Athens. And I'm about ready to go see my good friend, Elena, the Minister of Tourism. She's going to tell me all about where I'm going to go and what to do and where to be and how to do it. Let's go. Yes. 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 Water. Yes. Yes. Harvey Wallbanger. Harvey Wallbanger. Let's see. With a long island iced tea. Now water, water is good for nothing. If it wasn't for that relationship, we probably wouldn't be here right now. She was a real big uh, supporter of bringing us to Greece and getting us our permits. Um, she really fought hard when people were not being that supportive of bringing the show here. She helped us. So this is uh, very important for us. She's a really good hookup for this whole thing happening. Why, guys? The hard surfaces that it might be a little of a hard. Yeah. It's really, I mean, ancient Greeks, they knew what they, they were knew doing. They knew what they were doing. Really. Yeah. And the place is so much, uh, I mean, beauty and energy, and it's just underneath uh, the Acropolis, and you will enjoy it so much. I know. One of the best things about this show, all of the guys in the food fighters are actually really, like, genuine friends with Chad. Today is your lucky day. The cell phone's on mute or turned off. Poof. A fly on the wall. Edge TV has you looking over the shoulder of Chad Smith, the famed drummer of Red Hot Chili Peppers and host of Landmarks Live. 
He's shooting the breeze with his buddies in Athens, Greece. Chad is going to interview the band, um, and Chad's going to bartend for them. So it's a little, a little more fun than just a normal interview. Chad seems to know everybody. Yeah, and there's a good friendship here. Chad's known these guys for years. So. Yeah, it all started with Brad Paisley in Virginia, and it ramped up into Alicia Keys at the Apollo in New York City. And now we're here live in Greece with the Free Fighters. For me, it's a, an incredible honor because I'm, I'm Greek of Greek heritage, so it's a dream come true to be here in Greece with the Foo Fighters. I think there's nothing better. So this is, this, this is a pretty wacky gig, right? You, know, this isn't, you don't do this every day. Let, let me ask you, what are some of your like crazier, weird gigs that you guys have ever done? In your honor album. We did, we played the Air Force Base in Roswell, New Mexico, where they recovered the UFO crash stuff. We were in the hangar, like, next door. Any weird, uh... The spookiest part about that was that it's an airport, it's an airplane graveyard. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Conspiracy theories. We don't huh? know. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. That's why it's a conspiracy mm -hmm. theory. Mm -hmm. anything, anything special for the uh, gig at the Acropolis, since you're playing a brand new arena? Outside of the Yanni covers? Yeah. Um, Any surprises? I'd imagine that we'll probably do a bunch of new stuff. Yeah, we, it's kind of our own show. Yeah, we haven't done a lot of our own shows. We've been doing so many festivals. That would be good. How many like, How many new ones we could put in the set? But you play for well, four hours, so you could do the whole record three times. <laughs> we, Just switch them around. Uh, maybe we'll do five or six of them. I don't know. Right. And we're good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a We've done some weird shit over the last 22 years, but I think this one might take the cake. Well, we think we might be able to do this thing. I'm like, oh yeah, let's do it. And I thought, really, they're gonna let us do that? So. I just remember uh, getting the call asking if we'd be into playing at the Acropolis. And I said, uh, of course. It's on. It's finally on. And this is the first time the Foos have ever played Greece. Taking it to different levels. Not only are we playing Greece, we are playing in a magical place. It's very intense. Let's hope we don't break anything over there. Over there, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. First time in Greece? Nope, been here once before. Last time I was here, I had a broken leg so I couldn't get in the water. That's why today I spent all day long taking it in. Actually, we were supposed to play here in 1996 with Iggy Pop, but we had to cancel because an old friend of mine hugged me so hard he broke one of my ribs. It's true. I'm very fragile. I'm always breaking shit. Hopefully not tomorrow night, though. When in Greece, do as the Greeks. Athens is one of the oldest cities in Europe, continuously inhabited for over 7,000 years. It's the birthplace of democracy, astronomy, the Olympic Games, major mathematical principles, and Western theories of theater, literature, and the arts, just to cite a few contributions by the Greek people. Also, it's the oldest language in Europe, spoken for more than 3,000 years. Greek history and tradition has weathered the tide of change century after century, driven by a core value steeled in Greek pride and honor. With about 9,000 miles of coastline, the 10th longest in the world, you can go to the beach, surf, sand, and romance. But for the crew of City Drive and Bennett Productions, there's little time to spare. It's gonna be interesting to see how it all unfolds starting tonight at one o'clock in the morning when they start setting up the stage. You know, it's hurry, hurry, hurry. While the city of Athens sleeps, the lighting crew is prepping for their gear for a 1 a.m. load-in. Staging will start at daybreak, then sound, and right behind them will be the band setup crew, with only hours to build one of the wildest music events ever. Going on right now is we're getting front of houses loading in. We can make some noise. Setting up the TV trucks will arrive, so we're going to start setting up cameras and cables. And then the uh, sound guys will get out of here before it gets really hot. What's going on here? Same thing has been going on here since one o'clock in the morning. Programming lights. 
sun's up, lights are up, ready to go. The green room for the band doesn't exist. So they will build it, wire with power, and air condition it in the next six hours. Today's modern venues are pre-cabled for TV, or at least have electricity. The Herodas Theater was constructed more than 2,500 years ago. So the crew will put in more than 40,000 feet of cable and then take it out at the end of the night. We'll get everything up to the stage door and leave a load of spare there. Then we'll do the rig up to the jib, get that done. And then I'll probably get the guys to go have some breakfast and then come back for that. Just, just a heads up on that one, because yeah. we've already had an LED light that's actually caught fire yeah, yeah. because of the sun, Turn and that one's sitting in the sunshine. Five hours to showtime. We're putting cameras in position. Lighting was done while it was still dark. It's as hot as hell, we're all melting. Um, we just keep making sure cameras don't catch fire in the sun. We're looking good, we're in good shape. The technicians have brought to bear every bit of expertise and technology available. Two 40-foot jibs on either side of the theater, five robotic cameras, two of them on lifts, a third on dolly tracks, and a steady cam walking the entire theater for a total of 20 cameras and an eye in the sky overhead. The hustle and bustle has started for Athenians around the city just like any other day, except for the lucky few that have tickets to one of the greatest musical spectacles. That started taking shape while the Athenians slept. Now, as the sun is breaking over the walls of the Parthenon and down into the Herodas Theater, the staging is taking shape right on time. We had to get 90 people here from all over the world within three business days on a holiday weekend, yeah, but we're here at the Acropolis. And I have to go look busy. Rock and roll. It's just um, last minute changes. You know, last minute changes that are expected. And well, as a line producer, is there's a, uh, it's, it's a lot of the labor, it's where the rubber meets the road. You know, a lot of us haven't had any sleep. I think I had, last night I had about 90 minutes of sleep. The biggest shows I've done, four Crossroads Guitar Festivals, Cream Reunion Show in London, Eric Clapton and Steve Winwood in Madison Square Garden. Yeah, the biggest so far was the Foo Fighters. The scope of it and the kind of, the money, well, I don't want to talk about the money, but it's resources from all over the world. They, to prepare, to shoot the Foo Fighters in Greece, the first thing that we did was to charter a private jet to go look at locations and meet with the local Greek production company. Yeah, I want to get this as a location. So that was the start of it. So it was, it's a great deal of coordination and effort just to get, get the thing going. What it took to get here is a story in and of itself. More than two years of planning, nine months of back and forth on the ground with Greek officials, contractors, and a local producing partner, all in search of finding the fit. Understanding what key elements would be allowed and then trying to bring them all together on one day in a magical place. The show's called Landmarks Live, so in terms of landmarks, it probably doesn't get any bigger than this. I mean, this is thousands of years old and the structure that's still standing there. And you know, to be able to shoot in such a historical venue, it's just amazing. I'm, you know, I'm still blown away we're doing it. The technical and physical challenge to turn the Herodas Theater into a rock and roll concert venue was only compounded by the time constraint on everyone involved. Starting at 1 a.m., the crew only had 19 hours until Dave Grohl and Foo Fighters would walk onto stage to create perfection. Another central part of the story is all the times this journey came to impasses for one reason or another that sent everyone back to square one. This is probably the hardest show I ever had to do. I mean, so much went into this and to actually be here. Now it's starting to feel real. I'm getting a little goosebumps now. This is finally going to happen tonight. Uh, I don't know if it'll ever get better than this one. This is, this is the one. One of the things that makes this venue so unique is that you don't usually get to play in an amphitheater that's this high, this close. So it actually looks like you've got a wall of people right in front of you. Now 2.15 and uh, we're finishing our cabling, cameras are going to start coming in, uh, band crew's going to start setting up at I think, 3 o'clock, and then we're going to have fun. We're putting cameras in position. Lighting was done while it was still dark. It's as hot as hell, we're all melting. Um, we just keep making sure cameras don't catch fire in the sun.
So this is the uh, Hothead Control Centre. We've got five positions. This is going to be the tower cam, telescopic camera, reverse shots, shots off the main structure coming round, and we should be able to see a bit of the uh, Acropolis as well with the top of this one. This one's going to be a reverse Hothead. This one's in the pit, going to do the hero shot of Dave Grohl when he's playing his guitar. It's basically tracking through the central arch. And then that'll reveal it. So uh, five remotes and we're still cabling and trying to get this madness together. We're looking good, we're in good shape. Uh, line check, allegedly, hopefully 10 minutes time with all the cameras. Things are a little bit heavy at the moment, we've moved cameras around. We're a little bit behind, it's super hot, but everyone's working their best. The road crew has taken over the stage. Like clockwork, they methodically build what they call the back line. The instruments and everything it takes to bring the drums, keyboard, and guitars to life. I am changing strings on Pat's guitar. Tuning each piece to play its part in tonight's historical performance. Before that can happen, the guys who make up the road crew for Foo Fighters, some of the best techs in the world, will bring out the instruments they're responsible for. Uh, yeah, when they come in, we'll do what we need to do then. All right, quite the roll, Pat. From there, it's up to the audio engineer to bring it all together, the mix. This is where the balance of electronic voodoo and the performance secret sauce come together for that oh mighty acoustical sensation that human ears crave. A second feed will go to the video truck so the rest of the world can witness lightning being caught in a bottle. The exact moment your entire sensory is overwhelmed. Director Dan is uh, talking to the cameras, setting them up. Everybody can hear me? Uh, so I'm going to go around the cameras real quick. So uh, Pete, can you just give me a little variety? I want to see the camera. Making sure he has parameters of all of them, seeing what, what images he's going to get. So you can get tight on the keys? All right, so that's how we get keys. OK, perfect. Hey, Danny, we're coming on too. Because can... we're waiting for the band to come out and do a sound check. That's what we're doing. Yeah, it's getting real. Okay, 6.25 to 2 hours 15 minutes to live show. We're waiting to do sound check. We're waiting for the band to arrive. Oh my god, look at that. What? <laughs> oh my god, you're kidding me. Showtime's coming. Looking forward to it, guys. Woo! Not that easy. This is not that easy. What on earth <laughs> really are we doing here? Well, we're... Uh, Two hours and 20 minutes to showtime. We're going to jump the rockets and look at the kitchen. We're short cars. We've got to get in the fans tonight, but make sure Laura keep at least 30 or 40. <laughs> I'm not sure which is a stronger emotion, the fact that we've done it or just being in this place and just forget what we're doing. How's the sound? We need some people in here. Really loud. Once we get some people in here, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so marvelous. Marvelous or marvelous? It's so marvelous. Amazing. You know, when you walk out in the end of that catwalk, you're like, you're in there, you're in the audience. It's just, it's the Am I allowed to use the catwalk? Yeah, yeah, that's for you. That's for you. Oh, oh, I'm Pete, I'm shouting now. Have if you got a red light, Pete? Yeah. And then what I'll do is, if, if it doesn't look good, we'll turn around and we'll, um... And I'll, I'll go talk to the um, first time, right? Okay. Most of the cameras on this show will be operated by joysticks in another part of the venue. Not how a concert is usually filmed for TV. Let me see, let me see the wide shot. Let me see a reverse shot. Dave was at the front of the thrust. How tight can you get on him if he was at the tip of the thrust uh, singing? While the band and their roadies settle into what the night has in store for them, Dan, the camera ops, lighting, and video technicians are getting their only look at a TV event in the daylight that will take place after the sun has gone down. Flying without a net. Right now, about an hour and 40 minutes away from showtime. Uh, as you can see, people are starting to come in right now. Sun's going to be setting here soon. Um, 
gonna be one hell of a show, man. We just did a sound check. It was meant to be three songs. I think we did eight or nine songs sound check. It's looking good. It's sounding good. We're back on stage. Show opens in 45 minutes. Time to rock and roll. Go. Hello. I'm being summoned to the band right now. Sometimes this is good. Sometimes this is bad. So I think Dave was trying to put a set list together for me and because we just can't go blind for three hours. You know what? If someone sees Juliana, send her up there. Okay, got it. Okay, real quick, uh, it's now five to nine. Band's due on any second. Yeah. It's gonna be a monster. A musical moment in time that wouldn't even have been possible if it hadn't been for the pure dog-driven tenacity of everyone involved. As they exit the dressing rooms that had been erected for them just hours before, Foo Fighters Dave Grohl, Taylor Hawkins, Pat Smear, Chris Shiflett, Nate Mendel, and Rami Jaffe will take the stage, taking ownership of a space more than 2,000 years old. Tonight is not just a space of time. The Greek people have entrusted them with a monument that is the spirit of the Greek nation, a place of pride that derives their philitimo, meaning all that is good in mankind. Open up the mics, roll record. Feet don't fail me now. Oh, what's up with five? Losing five? Guys, what's up with five? Look up five. We can't lose that. It's showtime. Giles and Cab on gyms. Really start playing yes, around. Go for uh, on Chad. Get ready to go Chad when he comes out, okay? He's going to get ready to get him on uh, stage left. I'm ready, guys. Yeah, are you ready? Yeah, what do you think? Let's go. Have fun! Give it away. Give it away. <laughs> See you at the top. I'm Chad, and this is the Acropolis. Oh my God! I don't need to tell you that tonight is a very special night. It's a very, very special night, right? This is a very special place, and I've got my very special friends here playing tonight and it's going to be epic. Ladies and gentlemen, the hammer of the gods, the Foo Fighters! Let me tell you, We've done some crazy things over the last 20 years. But I think this might be the craziest thing the Foo Fighters have ever done. It's something. To wait for good emotion there this long to come play for you. But it's something else to wait this long to come play for you and then play this place right here. It's an honor to be here with you tonight. It's amazing. There have been moments in this band that we remember forever. Special moments. Go wide, go up high. But I think tonight will be a night that we'll never, ever, ever forget because of how special it is that we all came here together. This is amazing. So I thought the best way to start the show would be to sing a song about a moment like this. This song's called Times Like These. I, well, I'm a one way mode. I'm a one way Follows you back home. I, 
I'm a street light shining I'm a white light blinding bright Burning off and on uh -huh. It's times like these to learn to live again It's times like these you give and give again it's times like these you learn to love again it's times like these time and time again and i well, i'm a new day rising well, i'm a brand new sky to the stars upon tonight But I oh, no, well, I'm a little divided Do oh, we stay on the road And leave it all behind It's times like these to learn to live again. It's times like these you give and give. It's times like these you learn to love again. It's times like these times. Here we go! It's hard to kind of really say anything at the moment. Just it's um, it's pretty. Now it gets overwhelming. <laughs> of our job is the actual show. There's lots of pain and suffering until we get to this point, but once the music starts, we forget all of the hard work, and then it becomes just fun. This was one of those concerts that it was, it was happening, it wasn't happening, it was happening, it wasn't happening, but now that it finally happened, um, Besides it being the most phenomenal concert thing I've ever seen in the most historical place on the planet, I mean, it just all worked out, and uh, I'm really happy about it. I had a, besides, I had a blast. <laughs> there, there was just these genuine moments where Dave was connecting with everybody out in the audience. That, that, that's how we could put good TV together. The fans were passionate. Uh, you know, the band was on on point. The moments that we had, you know. It's all together. It took weeks and months of really hard work. Shooting at the Acropolis is no easy feat. With shows like this, like any show, we usually are inside an arena so we can look at the cameras, we can see the way they're gonna look when it's dark. Here, um, we had sunlight, we didn't load until today, so we never programmed lights, we never even got a look. I wasn't able to get my cameras in there. You know, everything, and nothing really came up until like, you know, right before the shows. About four songs in, when the sun was down and we had a look, and we're like, okay, we got this. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming out to this incredible evening. There were moments while we were playing where I thought, oh yeah, this is a Foo Fighters show. And then I'd open my eyes and see that and think, this is not a normal Foo Fighters show. <laughs> but I wish it was. Once in a lifetime experience, I'm glad we could share it with you tonight.
Thank you very much. Up to this point, it's just, it was just a job. Now it's an experience of a lifetime for sure. So for all the old Foo Fighters fans, thank you very much for staying with us for 20 years. 22 years, it's been a long time. For all of the new Foo Fighters fans, it's very nice to meet you. Everybody, you're really doing an amazing job. For anyone who's ever seen us play before, you know that we never really say goodbye. We always, we just say this. This was the show that really should not have happened. Really, we had everything going against us. No one wanted this show to happen. And we just pulled it off and it came off great. You know, it was, very, it was a very generous experience. I, I don't think they'll ever forget the first time they played Greece, because I don't know if they're ever gonna one-up this. I mean, they played one of the most historic landmarks in the world. Um, this is why we did this show. It's for stuff like this. We just got the Foo Fighters into the Acropolis. It, it, what an amazing night. Ten to twelve, show's over. Got my got my goodies, so I, I remember the show. Thanks, folks. I will never forget Straight this through. show. Great time. Let's do it again. On stage, please. Show, Yari. <laughs>